is all gone And all will see How great How great How great Is all gone Everybody sing How great Is all gone Say that with Pastor Webster, please. How to meet the needs of your spouse. How to meet the needs of your spouse. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am cognizant as I preach tonight that not every married couple is enjoying yada. True. 
Mercy. I know you would laugh. I want you to laugh and stop. I know that there are wives here who have had yather with their husbands for a long time. Yes. Tell us, They are enjoying it some or not. Mercy. I know of folks who are dysfunctional. I'm cognizant of things like that. I know as well that there are some men who cannot handle the menopause issue. Mercy. But it's an issue you have to deal with. Tell us, preacher. It requires patience. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. But I also know that there are many couples who enjoy yada. Amen. Come Hallelujah. on, if you enjoy it, smile. Praise Come on, Joseph, Lord. smile, boy. Glory to his name. Amen. 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 The sermon tonight will help those who are enjoying it and those who are not and it will inform those who plan to enjoy it sometime soon. Tell us about the preacher. Amen. I want to begin by saying tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that marriage is undergoing profound changes. True. Did you hear me? Yes, preacher. And because marriage is in decline... Unmarried cohabitation is on the rise. Talk about it, preacher. So you have more people living common law than those who are married. Common law living is wrong in the sight of God. Tell us about it, preacher. Amen. If you are living with a man that is not your husband or a woman that is not your wife and you die tomorrow, you are lost. Yes, preacher. Amen. Mercy. If I challenge you, live in common law. Come and see us. Yes. Simon is a marriage officer. In three days, we get the license and we fix you up right under the tent. Amen. Oh, yeah, we get everything for you. The only thing we don't get is the ring. Because you can have the ring and don't have the man. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Yes, sure. We'll fix you up here tonight under the tent in Jesus' name. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, the earliest indicator of society's response the shifting ideas about marriage was a spike in the rate of divorce. A spike in the what? Rate of divorce. And divorce, ladies and gentlemen, is not only high outside of the church. It is high inside of the church. That is what is amazing. Mercy, preacher. Folks in church are supposed to stay together longer. Yes. Mercy. And ladies and gentlemen, the statistic says that for every two marriages, one breaks up. Mercy. And I want you to know that God still holds marriage in high regard. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Anything that God instituted before sin, he holds it in high regard. Amen. Marriage was before sin, so he holds it in high regard. The Sabbath was before sin, so he holds it in high regard. Amen. Is anybody listening to me here? Amen, preacher. And anything that God instituted before sin is attacked ferociously by the devil. Hmm. But when you stay together in your marriage, man, I tell you, the get devil gets mad. Nice. But God is glad. Come on, somebody amen. say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Paul, who thought it wise not to get married, <laughs> gave special counsel that helps to cement the marriage. Paul never got married. Paul was a short, bald head man. And he had bad eyes, but he didn't get married. I don't know why. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he gives special counsel that helps to cement the marriage. Hear what Paul says. I want everybody to read it, Pastor Webster. First Corinthians 7 and verse 3. This is King James and we are reading it in about two or three more translations. What it says here. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Now that was only Pastor Webster. The next one I want everybody to read. Let's go with this one. This is from the New Life Bible. What it says here. Let the husband render to the wife the affection due to her. All right, let's go to another translation. It says now in the Clearwood Bible, those who are married should not feel that it is wrong to have sexual relations. Ah, let's go to the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or not. Whether in bed, doesn't have to be in the bed, could be on the floor. <laughs> yes, preacher, tell us about it. As long as your mind could be in the bathroom. Amen. 
I could be on the porch. Is anybody listening to me? As long as you're married anywhere with Jesus, I will. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. And the Bible says the last one, the last translation, which is this one. This is the contemporary English version. What it says here? Husbands and wives should be fair with each other about having sex. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's get down here. Fasten your seatbelts. If you got to laugh, laugh and stop. It is clear, ladies and gentlemen, as you look at these verses using the different translation, that the following pertains. Put it on the screen here. Put the first one. The husband has needs to be met. And put the second one. And the wife has needs also. But watch it. Watch the punchline. Girl, put it. Girl. But, but ladies and gentlemen, the needs of men and the needs of women are different. Tell us about the preacher. Aye, aye, aye. Stay with me here tonight. Break it down. I went on the internet, did some research and found out that every cell of our bodies as men and women differ. Yes. Not some cells, you know. Every. All. The skeletal structure, for example, of a woman is shorter and broader. Hmm. Woman's, a, a, a woman's blood contains fewer red cells, making them tire more easily. Hmm. Tell us, preacher. I read it, I see. <laughs> Women have a larger stomach. Stomach. Hmm. That means they eat more. <laughs> hmm. Question. They have a larger stomach, kidneys, liver, and appendix, but they have smaller lungs. Huh? Oh. And sources of other physical differences may influence the way each person in a relationship feels and behaves. Tell us, preacher. That's why you got to know your woman. True. That's why you don't just jump and get married. There's a thing called counseling. Yes, preacher. Tell us about Finding it. Finding out what the woman likes and what the man likes. Because every woman is different. different. So the needs of men and the needs of women are not only different physically but sexually. Yes. Preacher. So follow me here tonight. You all listen to me. Tell us, preacher. If our needs are different then it is important, it is what Webster? Important. That we become aware of each other's need and learn to meet them. Yes, preacher. Now, I read that a man has five basic needs in marriage. You might perceive yours differently, but a man has five basic needs in marriage. The first one, sister put it, is what we call sexual fulfillment. The man doesn't just want the other, he wanted good. Yes, sir. Yes, preacher. Tell us about it. Come on, bro. Talk to me now, man. The man wants the thing so good that when he's finished, he can go in the mirror. Yes. Amen. That was Webster. Hallelujah. A man hates any kind of crucifixion, yada. True. You can't just lie down, girl. Use your hands, man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where, where, where you dropping your head for? Boy, sit up, boy. Use your hands, man. Touch the air. Touch the hair. Do something. Yes. You are not being crucified. Is anybody here? Amen. Hallelujah. Tell us about it. And the reason why some of these women are lay as if they are crucified is because you men don't have any tact. You just bounce on, bounce off, whip, whap. Thank you, man. Mercy, preacher. Mercy. Mercy. If you want good sexual fulfillment, you got to learn to take your time. Yes, Come on, somebody yes. say amen. Amen. All night long, all night. Take your time, boy. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Tell us, the next thing that's important for a man is what we call a recreational what? Companionship. A man loves to have a wife who will go out with him. Yes. Got to watch a little cricket. True. Especially if he's batting. Yeah. And she out there shouting. Yes. And he hitting every ball for four. Amen. <laughs> yes. That's my husband. That's my husband. And when you support your man along those lines, man, I find he does better in the house. Yes. He will wash the dishes more. True. <laughs> he will make up the bed when he gets up. Is Amen. anybody listening to me? Hallelujah. The third one is what we call an attractive spouse. You must look good. That's true. Some of you touch and it look like if you're 60. Mercy, preacher. Mercy. Mercy. Fix your face. If your face have holes, put in some powder. Mercy, preacher. If your tongue's stripping, put some Vaseline. 
Come on, somebody say it. And don't dress in them old dress. Dress in something nice. Amen. Tell Am I speaking the truth here, man? Yes, teacher. Husband also look for put the third one. Domestic support. A woman must know how to cook. True. And how to iron. Yes, preacher. When some of you are in the pants, you give it 10 seeds. Mercy, preacher. Mercy. You must know how to cook because the closest place to a man's heart is his what? Stomach. Yes, preacher. Some of you make the dumplings soft, 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 soft. And the, and the gravy salt, 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 salt. Mercy. And the chicken white, 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 white. Mercy, preacher. Mercy. Some of you don't like to clean house. You're going to the house cobweb everywhere. Mercy, preacher. Man loves a woman of class, man. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. And the final one for man is admiration. A man loves to admire his wife. He must be able to speak well. Yes. Not because you're from St. Vincent. Why, where are you? Eh? I make you push me so. Speak well. Boy, what are you doing here? Why are you pushing me so? Mercy, preacher. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the five most important for men. Well, let's look at the five most important for women. For women, let's look. Let's look at it. The first one, put it, is called what? Affection. So while the man is looking for sexual fulfillment, the woman is looking for affection. Yes, preacher. Affection is hugging and touching. Yes, preacher. Keeping the house clean. Yes, preacher. When you're bed, instead of showing the towel there, hang it up. Yes, preacher. Is anybody listening to me? Tell us about that. If by chance your foot smelling, wash your foot before yes, you come in the house. All that is showing affection. Am I speaking the truth? Yes, preacher. The second one for a woman is like they like to talk. They like to what? Talk. Conversation. Aaron, they will talk all night before they can give you some yard. Mercy. And you sit down there, you lie down there listening. And sometimes they talk so long, by the time you finish. <sighs> mercy, preacher, mercy. Tell us about that. Therefore, how do you, how do you conquer a woman that likes to talk? You have to learn to listen. You got to master the art of listening. And not just listening, saying nothing. You must say yes, yes, yes. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, preacher, amen. I heard a husband told his wife, you talk too much. Huh? You talk too much. And then he heard something on the radio that says for every 15,000 words a man speaks. Huh? A woman speaks 30,000. He said, you see? You see? You see? The woman said, yes. Yes. Because every time I tell you something, I have to say it again. He said, what? Whoa, whoa. What did you say there? <laughs> Mercy, preacher. Woman likes to talk. You got to learn to listen. I'm away from my wife. I listen all the time. For two hours, talk, girl. Because relationships are formed by talking. Talk to me. What happened? You sleeping? No, 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 no. Yeah. Is anybody listening? Yes, preacher. The third thing for a woman is what I call honesty and openness. A woman of an honest man. True. If you say you're going up. What end you call up there? East end. If you say you're going up east end, do not do, do not go carrot bay. Right. Hmm. If you say you're going by by this guy to play dominoes, don't go someplace else. Tell a woman love up. honesty. Yes, preacher. Speak the truth. And let me tell you something. A woman can detect lie better than a lie detector. True, preacher. Tell us about it. So the best thing to do is to tell her that truth. The truth. If there's somebody in the church after you, tell her. Yes, preacher. Because even if you don't tell her, she would detect it. Yes, preacher. True. Women have sense, you hear? If you think you're smarter than them, no. And let me tell you something. Women are far smarter than men. Yes, it's true. true. You all don't have to say amen is the truth. And can I tell you something else about women? They don't really need us. They could live without us. I 
I said they can live without us. There's some of you husbands here who have left your wife and she's there all by herself. All she does take a bath and go to sleep. Are you listening to me? Yes. But not you. <laughs> Mercy. The next thing for a woman, put it here. It's financial support. Yes, teacher. You got to get she larger shares. Because they like to shop. Yes. They like to shop. They go infinity, they go variety, they go all around the place, and then they come back right by infinity and buy the thing. Mercy. When I'm in New York with my wife, up and down, up and down, up and down, up. I thank God when I go in them places that they have a place I can sit. Mercy. Peter. And I ain't making no fuss because you see, if you make fuss in the day, things will be nice, nice in the night. Tell us about the preacher. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you, you. Awesome. And finally, for a woman, is what we call what? Family, Family commitment. commitment. She loves when you can spend time with the children. Oh, yeah. Give her a break, no man. Take them out. Yeah. Then she get break. Then she lie down, put up her feet. Take them out. Take them to the beach. Take them someplace. Take them to Virgin Garda. Or, or take them to Marina's Bay by Pasa. Yeah. <laughs> take them someplace. Give her, give her some time. Come on, somebody say amen. Yes, preacher. Amen. Now, follow me here tonight. Because the needs of men and women are different. I can safely declare that the basic needs of men and women must be met. Therefore, put it. For a spouse to render due benevolence, the spouse must be prepared. What's the verb? The spouse will be what? Prepared. It's not in your psyche, but you must be prepared to meet needs that he or she may not appreciate. You see me? I hate washing shoes. Especially them plastic things. True. Like you could never get out the grease. True preacher. Done. You gotta use done. But if I have to wash in the day so that I can have a good night. You'll wash them preacher. What? Twice? <laughs> now ladies and gentlemen. It will take more than one sermon. To expound on all ten basic needs, therefore we're going to look at two of them. What's the two? Put the first one. The first one is? Affection. And the second one is? Sexual fulfillment. Okay, fasten your seat. Now ladies and gentlemen, affection is the cement of a relationship. You all listen to that counseling session. Hmm, tell us, preacher. Affection is it, not the other. It is the expression of love for a woman. Hmm. So sometimes in church, after church, they come and hug you and rub your back. It's not the other they want. Yes. Is anybody here? Yes, teacher. You see the physical, in fact, the typical man sees showing affection as part of sexual foreplay. And scientifically, his arousal mechanism is like fast food. As soon as he sees such skeleton, he's ready. Mercy. A man has two brains, Joseph. How many brains? Two. This one and that one. Yes, yes preacher. And when this one is up, this one stops functioning. Yes. That's true, preacher. Two heads, yes. Two Well, ladies and gentlemen, for a woman, the affection she gives and receives is not intended to be sexual. Hmm. Therefore, if the husband is to meet his wife's needs or render to benevolence, he must learn to be affectionate. Amen. He True. must learn to be what? Affectionate. Because when it comes to yada and affection, you cannot have one without the other. That's true, preacher. Tell us about that. When you don't give her the affection, the other sour. True. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, and when you drink sour things, it makes you... Now, what are some of the habits that go a long way in helping you to be an affectionate husband? You must learn to hug your wife. And you must know how to hug. Yes, teacher. You don't hug her around your neck. Mommy. You're choking her. You're giving her sleep. I'll put your hand around the waist. Hmm, close, to, close to the buttocks. Hmm, yes, and make sure your hand is flat. Hmm. So every now and again, you can just... Hmm. You, you, you. Awesome. And when you are hugging her in front of you, you don't show your hand around there. 
Lord. No, you put your hand around the waist. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's look like I'm teaching some people here. Today. Yes. Joseph, boy. <laughs> then there is holding hands. And so many if you got to hold your wife's hand, your hand must be smooth. Mm-hmm. You got to learn to put cream on your hand. Some of your hands so rough and rough like sandpaper. Mercy, preacher. And you're taking that hand and hitting the woman. And let me say here, a man must not hit a woman. It is wrong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You hit me, hit your back. So there's nothing wrong with a man having a little pedicure and money. And when you hold hands, you don't put like hands in that sometimes. You just ba- ba- barely hold a woman's hand so that the three fingers can run in the middle. Mm. Yes, preacher. Hmm. I believe I can fly. <laughs> What else? What are some of the habits? Kissing. Yeah. Some of you can't kiss. Oh, some of you just kiss like you're biting apple. Mercy, <laughs> preacher. Oh, Lord. You got to take your time. And you don't start kissing one time. You, you know? Yeah, the mouth closed. And when you get free, it open. And you take your time. Yeah. Enjoy the thing. Come on, somebody say amen. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, then there's, there's washing dishes. I, I, I want to move on. There is cleaning the house and making the bed and gifts. Mm-hmm. Don't miss the woman's birthday. Mm-hmm. Don't miss her anniversary. Mercy. That's crazy. When I'm away, regardless of where I am, if it's my wife's birthday, she gets a bouquet. And not at home, you know. At the school where she works. Amen. Yes, teacher. Oh, it's some affection. When you see I drop at the school, I don't just pull aside and let her come out, especially when the teacher's there. I go on the other side and open the door. Hmm. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. They got to put on sometimes. So what happened with my wife? Is anybody here? Yes. Oh. As men, you must learn the habits of affection, yeah? We don't have it. We got to learn it. And habits of affection must not be motivated by your own need. It must be motivated by your desire to meet your wife's need. Because ladies and gentlemen, if these affections are motivated by your need, you will only do it when you want. True. You do it all the time. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I told you that when it comes to yard and affection, you cannot have one without the other. You hear me here tonight? In most cases... A woman needs to feel the oneness of her husband before she can have a yada with him. Why? Put it. Have the answer. Put it. In marriage, put it. Put it now. Affection is the what? Environment. Put the next one down there, Pastor. What it says? Sex is an event. Sex is an event. Because sex is an event that can last for three minutes. A marathon. By the time you win. <laughs> but if you will create the environment. Hmm. Get, some, get some candles. And, Yes, we Put on some nice love songs. Nothing wrong with some love songs. Hmm. Huh? Nothing, nothing wrong with songs that will make you love your wife more. Mm-hmm. Yes, we Put on some nice songs. Some Kenny G. Tell us. If by chance you're not so smooth and you want it rough, you can put on She's Royal. <laughs> and I want her in. You all stop. Stop. Tell us, Peter. And so because, yeah, there's an event, it can last for five minutes. Therefore, put the thing on the screen, please. If you want to have great what? Sexual fulfillment. You must do what, pastor? Create the environment. Some of you just go home lie down on the bed. Wait it. Oh, you think it's a prostitute? Mercy. Go out and help the girl. Come, darling, where are you waiting so long? Come, go. Create the environment. Let me tell you something. I did some studies with Yada today. Yada is not just muscle. Yada is mind. You got to love the woman. And the more you love, the more the muscle will expand. You, you, you. Yes, preacher. Understand? And so, ladies and gentlemen, affection is a canopy that covers and protects the marriage. It gives Yada a more appropriate context. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, if your marriage is struggling sexually, look for the missing element of affection. Yes, preacher. Treat the woman good. Tell us about it. Make sure she has money to go to the hairdresser at least every month. Yes, preacher. Is anybody?
Anybody listen to me? Yes. It is therefore clear to me. Put it here. It is therefore clear to me that if my need for sex is to be fulfilled, I must take the what pastor? Initiative. By what pastor? Learning to, learning to meet my, my wife needs, needs for affection. affection. First. The text says, let the man render due benevolence unto his wife. The wife must get it first. And when she gets it, you're going to get yours. Amen. Hallelujah. I know some of you can't say amen because you're not enjoying this thing. Mercy, preacher. Well, it's not my fault. You need to go back and talk about it. Yes. And why is your, if you're not enjoying it, tell him. Don't come tell me. Tell the pastor, tell him. You're going too fast. Take your time. Yes, stay right there. That's what we're talking about. You must learn to know what is for play. The house not on fire. Take your time. Talk to him. I'm not enjoying this. Tell him what you want. Are you listening to me here? Yes, please. I find too many of us take our business outside when we can solve it right on the Mr. Skelton, I know you're not enjoying this. What are you going to do? Mercy. I hope I'm still, I'm still your friend after. Now let's look at sexual fulfillment. Sexual fulfillment is special to a man. Not just yada, but sexual fulfillment. Man wants to feel good. Why do you think they pay prostitutes? Hmm. Huh? This man, what do you think? Do the dirty the man. I pay you to do this, do that. Mm -hmm. Some of these prostitutes are the, are, the, are the richest men that go to them. Because these rich wives, oh, I feel rich. They lie down a special way. Uh -huh. They got the head a special way. <laughs> One of the strangest studies in human behavior is married men who are sexually attracted to another woman. These men include bank presidents, successful politicians, yes. presidents, pastors, yes. and these men have thrown away careers and let their life achievement go down the drain for one thing, sexual fulfillment. Yes. Mercy, preacher. Ask Tiger. Ask Mike Tyson. Hmm. Ask John Edwards. Ask Clinton. <laughs> Ask Clinton. <laughs> Ask the guy who loves to play the harmonica. Who that? Who that? Ladies and gentlemen, tonight to prevent this tragedy, there must be an understanding of the difference between the sexuality of men and the sexuality of women. If I send out a questionnaire, you'll find out that almost all men under this center are masturbating. They say 95% of men. Simon is in the 5%. Wrong, you and I in the 95. Mercy. Wrong, talk the truth now. Simon, to hold you to do things like that. Mercy, preacher. Simon. On the other hand, listen to me. Few men are none at all masturbate. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Yeah. It goes to show that man have a stronger desire for yada. Sure. And what he wants, ladies, is fulfillment. Wow. And biologically, they told me every two days or three days, he man. Last God, he need, he need. <laughs> And because you know you need it, you have to help her to give you. You understand? Yes, preacher. Don't just say I need it. Come, come on, somebody listen to me now, man. And it is clear to me that a man cannot receive sexual fulfillment in marriage unless his wife is sexually fulfill herself. True. Yeah, there is no yada if you just enjoy it. That's Am I speaking the truth here? Yeah, but when she yeah. enjoys it, man, she blows off the roof. And Glasgow yeah. boy, you start pacing the kitchen, boy. Praise ah. the Lord. Ah, ah, man, you're talking tongues. <laughs> Allah, hila, Allah, tala, hila. <laughs> because when she enjoys it, Pope, it makes you feel like a man. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Therefore, put it in the gill. For a man's sexual needs to be, his wife must join him in the experience. And for a man, while it is a sight thing, for a woman it's a mind thing. Soon as you see, you're ready, but for her it's a what? Mind thing. You don't understand. You don't understand. Husbands, your wife must be prepared. Yes. Fish tastes better when it's seasoned. True. True. Put in garlic and onion. Oh, yeah. And some, and some jerk, Jamaican and jerk seasoning. Mm. Some bacon season and some side. Is anybody yes, here? And watch it. You don't leave it for five minutes. You leave it over. Yes. And when you put that thing in some, yes. some cooking oil, yes. Woo, you can even smell it. Yes. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Nobody likes rice that's hard. My mother told me when you cook rice, you must take a spoon and press it. If when you press it, it You ask Mr. Preacher, why must she be why must she be prepared? Put it, I have an answer. Put it. Why must a woman be prepared? A man is what? Aroused. But put it here. But a woman decides to be aroused. If she doesn't want any orgasm, you can't make her have it. You could run from now until next year. She got to decide she wants. Is anybody listening? True. I'm not rude enough, I'm just being practical. You cannot say I'm rude, I'm being practical. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, what activates her mind? What activates her mind so that this, she decides to be aroused? Put it there, put it. It's what, girl, put it in your man. It's what? Affection. Sure that you love her. Yes, teacher. You got the cell phone now, call in today. Mm-hmm. That was such a nice thing. Hmm. How is that lips of mine? How are, how are those eyes? Look oh, these eyes of mine. You got that, man. I said a text. You got lyrics. Stuck on you. Yes, sir. You're in love with your soul. So you do hold it, you do sing that. Well, if you don't want to sing that, then, then, then text her then. Amazing grace. Hmm. Mercy preacher. Mercy. Instead of turning her off, you'll turn and turn her on, you'll turn her off. Mercy, preacher. Now send me here tonight. Send me here tonight. 8 30. Send me. Now the Bible has a story of a woman who decides to be around. And I'm reading that. I didn't hear you. I'm reading the what? Bible. The same Bible that says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it? Holy. The same Bible that says, if we sin, God is faithful and just to what? Cleanse us. And to cleanse us. Let's go to the Bible. Songs of Solomon chapter 4, verse 6 and verse 1. Hear what? So, the, um, Solomon is saying, my darling, you are loved. Hmm. Webster, you can't read this wrong. You're to change the accent. So very lovely. <laughs> As you look through your veil, your eyes are those of a dove. Uh-huh. And when he says that, he looks in the eyes. Hmm. The guy's giving compliment. Your hair tosses about as gracefully as goats coming down from Gilead. You might think that is bad, but that's a compliment. Hmm. In other words, your hair is well. It's not disheveled. It's nice. And then he continues. Put it, put it on your teeth. So notice that. So he goes from the eyes to the teeth. So when uh, uh, he compliments her eyes, she smiles. And he says, your teeth are whiter than sheep freshly washed. They match perfectly. Not one is missing. She got all her teeth. Hmm. It's important, woman, that you have all your teeth. And make sure your breath is fresh. 
Mercy. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, sir. What turns a man off more than anything else is a bad breath woman. Mercy. And a bad breath man to turn off a woman. Mercy, preacher. Let's go on. He says in verse 3, thy what? Lips. So from the from the from the eyes he goes to the lips. Teeth, the teeth part of the teeth. And then he goes to the what? Lips. He says, Your lips are like to the sky. And thy speech is coming. She speaks well. Yes. Thy temples, so watch it. He goes from the lips where the temples are. Behind thy temples are like a piece of from granite within thy mouth. Let's call this thy, 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 thy temples are like a piece of a sugar wrapper within thy mouth. So he's coming from the eyes to the to the what? To the what? The Bible says now in verse 4, thy neck, so he comes. Notice he's coming where? Down. You all talk to me as he's coming where? Down. What is this? My word? Is, isn't this the Bible? The Bible. He says, your neck is like the Tower of David, build it for an armory, whereon there hang a thousand bucklers of shields of mighty men. Oh boy, she has a nice neck. Nice and she yeah. makes sure perfume gets there. Yeah. Tell us, Not that cheap perfume I saw at Variety, but Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> something expensive, incense, something that will stay. No, not something that just spray on, so you just spray on, it's gone. Is anybody here? He comes up. Watch it there, watch it. He says, your what? Breast. Pastor, you say it, no, Pastor, you know these. What's this? Your breast. Your breasts are perfect. Yeah. So watch it. From the eyes and the lips and the teeth and the temple and the neck. He comes down to the what? He's coming. Yeah. Coming down, down, down. Yeah. Coming. Yeah. And the glory. Oh, this stop. He says your breasts are perfect. They are twin. They're feeding among them. So the breast is up in the air. They are not falling. Mercy, and if by chance you have a wife that has fallen breast, don't be mad. Just lift them up in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to His name. Whether they're big, small, fallen, or still, their breasts. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And most of the times they are fallen because of you. Yes. Oh Lord. Somebody else. I know some of you not enjoying this. I know some are. But I gotta preach it anyway. Yes, teacher. I, I sorry you're here. <laughs> From the breast in verse 11, he says, Thy what? Lips. Oh, my spouse, drop as the honey goes. Yes. Then he just said lips. Yes. yes. So I don't know. I, 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 I try to understand. You understand? It's either he went back up. Yes. Or he kept going. Down. And if the progression is right, then he didn't go back up. He kept going. Yeah. Because the first lip, he said it has tread. He said from this lip, honey and milk are under your tongue. I read in the Bible. Not only that, he says the smell of thy garments is like the smell of what? That your smell good. I see some of you twisting your mouth, you're vexed like hell. Mercy, preacher. So the man is talking about his woman. And because he's talking about her, she gets excited. Put the thing, the man. Put it. And so hear what she says. No, he says, he continues, verse 12. A garden encloses my sister. My spouse, a spring shut up, a fountain seal. She's a virgin. Hmm. She's a garden enclosed. She's a spring shut up and she's a fountain. Seal preacher. Hey. Hmm. Can't sing tonight. And then after all that compliment. There yeah, the girl now. Put it. What girl? Put it. The girl say, awake or not wake. And come down. South. And blow upon my garden. That the spices thereof may what? Flow out. That's what we're talking about. Baseman laugh, no man. Yes, preacher. But I'm reading the Bible. What is that? Bible. That the spices thereof may what? 
Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruit. Amen. Preach it. I know you're getting in trouble tonight. Pastor Peter's going to call Silton. But Silton is the Bible. Amen. If it's in the Bible, we want it. Not true. Hallelujah. So my friends, when it comes to yard and affection, you can't have one without the other. And so I declare tonight, put it. Let the husband render unto the wife do what? Benevolent. The husband must do it first. And after he has done it, and likewise, because it's likewise, it means that the wife must do it also. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. And then the Bible says, put it here in verse 5. It says, defraud you not one the other, except it be with what? Consent. For a time. So by chance you don't want to have the other, don't just stay off. You got to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Well, darling, I'm praying and fasting this week. All right, let me do it together. And after fasting, you can't want to be fasting for two weeks. No, preacher. You're fasting for the whole year? No. No, sir. The Bible says here that except it be with consent for a time that you may give yourself to what? Fasting and prayer. And come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Mm. My friends tonight, Jesus wants us to have happy marriages. The devil wants to mess it up. True. The devil knows what happy marriage means to God. Therefore, he uses every conceivable thing to destroy your marriage. Money. True. Come on, man. Don't let money destroy you. So you ladies to greed. You gotta be satisfied with what you have. Amen. And you keep looking at other people. You think money brings happiness? The people in the house with more money doesn't mean that they are happy. No, happiness is to know the same. Amen. Come on, somebody talk to me. Hallelujah. He destroyed our marriages with our in-laws. I told my wife, I am not married to your mother or your sister. I'm married to you. Amen. Tell us, preacher. No in-laws coming in my house and doing what they like. You understand me? I am married to you. I love your mother. I respect them. But I don't believe in no marriage to no family. I'm married to you. Yes, I said I do too. Yes, preacher. You have some evil and jealous in laws coming to destroy your home. Are you listening to me here? Yes, preacher. I don't care, my pastor. I'll ask you to leave outside. True. Marriage is serious. Marriage is serious. Somebody asked me, oh, if your mother and wife are dying. Which one will you say? Your wife. Your wife. Well, I say my wife. They say, why? Well, it's my mother dead. <laughs> but the Bible says that when you are married, then shall a man leave his mother and his father and cleave unto his wife, and there shall be what? One flesh. Don't let your mother or your relatives tell you what to do. You work it out together. Come on, somebody Amen. say Amen. Hallelujah. Then they're trying to destroy our marriage with sexual incompatibility. Even something with size. You marry her slim, 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 and she get fat. So what? It's her fault? Huh? Even if she have mufflers here, mufflers there, so what? Go to the gym with her on the treadmill. Yes, teacher. Am I talking to anybody? Yes. But the good news tonight is this. Put it. The devil can't tell you who to choose. And so tonight the choice is yours. The choice is whose? Yours. And friends, I don't know about you. I want my marriage to be happy, successful, long, long lasting, romantic, forgiving. And because I'm a pastor, I'm a romantic guy. Tell us, preacher. You hear me? I'm down here for four weeks and some. So you know when I go home. Mercy. I believe I can fly. (laughs) 
Satan brings sadness and chaos in the home. But Jesus brings. Amen. He must be the silent listener of every, every conversation. Jesus must be in your home. Marriage was it was instituted by God. So that you can be happy. Oh yes, there are challenges that don't perfect marriage. That's true. I don't know if wrong one is perfect, but mine is and what keeps a marriage is not love, it's commitment. Because you fall out of love sometimes. She does some foolishness, you do some foolishness, but that commitment, come on, somebody say it. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I've made a choice to be committed. What about you? In a world of many choices, it's the call of many voices. When they all call out, to greet thee, I turn my eyes to thee, cause I found in him a loving friend who will take me to the very end. Yes, I found in him a faithful guide. Calls me his very own. I choose you again and again. I choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, the Lord. I choose you again. I choose you again and again. I choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, the Lord. I choose you again. Come on, Hallelujah. somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Every child